Hello trade pros and welcome to the fourth installment of the e-mini micro futures mini series. In this installment here, we're gonna cover trading the e-mini micro basics. So far in this mini series, Vic has done a great job introducing you to what the micro futures are. In the second lesson, he covered how these micro futures will offer retail traders a great opportunity to get some skin in the game and how a lot of retail traders will likely make a shift over from FX into the futures industry as a result of these micro futures. And in the third lesson, he went through why the transition from demo to a live trading environment is going to be made a a lot easier with these micro futures just due to the leverage due to the risk amount that you can do on a small account this really offers traders a great opportunity as mentioned to get some skin in the game and so in this installment what I'm gonna take a look at is how you can use the actual e-mini instruments to trade those micros and why the benefits rather what some of the benefits are with regards to using the minis over the micros solely. So let's get started with that. What you see on my screen in front of you is my Sierra chart platform. And I've got some charts up of both the S&P 500 minis and the S&P 500 micros. So here you're seeing the E minis, the S&P E minis. Down here, you are seeing the micros. Same here, you're seeing the minis up top, the footprint chart, the micros, and all our doms right here, the left-hand dom is the minis, and the right-hand side is your micros. And so one of the benefits to using the minis over the micros is that institutional traders, institutional funds they transact primarily on the minis they're not going to be spending time in these micros throwing on you know 10,000 lots it's a lot more efficient for them to stay in these minis and throw on their thousand lots you know hundred lots thousand lots and so the reason why we like to use the minis to trade the micros is because institutional traders are going to be trading the minis we're able to see what their orders are looking like where they're placing their orders where they're interested in trading and we can use these levels of intent in order to trade the micros one of the other reasons why it's a benefit to use the minis over the micros is that the liquidity is a lot bigger on the minis so you're not going to experience as much slippage and you don't really have this problem with the s p 500 minis or the micros However, when you start looking at the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Russell Micros, you'll start seeing a little bit more slippage on the charts, especially when you're looking on the footprint. This can confuse you and it can make it very difficult to trade that market just following the micros in itself. So we'll show you guys here with the examples why we like to use the minis to trade the micros. And so what you're seeing here on the S&P 500 is basically your five tick range bar chart. This is your five tick reversal and this is the DOM. So the first thing I want you to do is focus your attention to the actual depth of market here on the right hand side of my screen and what you'll notice right away is that the liquidity is a lot larger on the actual minis here than it is on these micros so you can see on average here i'd say we have around 130 to 140 lots sitting at you know any given price level whereas on the dom here of the e minis you're seeing around i'd say probably in the neighborhood of 300 to 350 is your average inventory on each price level so right away you can see that there is a lot more liquidity on the minis than there are on the micros and so slippage is pretty good on the spoos micros because this is the largest market and you're going to have the most people trading this one so overall what you'll notice is that they're trading quite similarly you're seeing 78 on the offer here 77 three quarters on the bid now we're bidding up here and you're seeing that the doms are working quite well there's not very much slippage or spread between these two which is great to see so micros on the spoos at least are very liquid and you're not going to get much slippage however if we switch over to the dow charts and now what you're seeing is the dow mini right up here and the dow micros and now what you're starting to see if we start comparing these two charts what will you notice take a look at these you're seeing a lot more gapping on this chart and see some gaps here you know 
it's a little bit choppy in this little section, whereas on the mini, you're getting clean price action. And so this is one of the reasons why we suggest utilizing the minis to trade the micros because this can throw you off. It's very difficult to qualify a trade, you know, if price is kind of gapping up and down and it's very difficult to read. If I open up the footprint chart, this is what the Dow looks like on the minis. All right, so pretty clean price action. You are still seeing a little bit of slippage. However, when I open up the footprint on the micro, this is what that looks like. And it's a lot choppier, a lot more gapping going on. And it's it becomes very difficult to qualify anything based on that. So what you wanna do is you'll wanna look at what the minis are doing and then qualify your micros based on that. So the benefit of doing this is you can have the charts up for the minis. So in this case, you could have the Dow five tick up here, the five tick reversal, and you will just keep the actual DOM of the micro on your screen. So let's say you're looking to qualify a short now that you're seeing, you know, the market starting to rotate a bit lower. Where would you take that short? Let's say you wanna get short right here at the 26028. So if you're looking to get short on the micros, what you can do is you can throw a limit on the DOM on the 28. So I'll throw that on there for a minute or two, see if that goes through. But generally, this is what you're looking for. You can qualify those trades on the micros when you get that structure on these minis. So that's one of the reasons why we like to use these minis, just because the liquidity, the slippage is a lot less noticeable on the actual minis than it is on the micros. And the final reason why we like to use the minis to trade the micros is because the inventory on the minis tends to lead the micros. So just jumping back to what we were mentioning earlier in the sense that a lot of the institutional traders will be trading those minis. So we can see where their orders are sitting. We can see what levels they're intending to transact at, and we can use that information to qualify those trades on these micros. So that's going to be a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this installment. In the next installment, I'm going to go through some of the strategies that you can use to trade these micros. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And until next time, good luck and good trading. We'll see you then. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and make sure to share our channel with your family and friends. Anyone that's interested in getting into trading, we'd be really, really happy to have you guys on board. So again, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Take care, guys.